Thank you for joining the channel. I'm Christine Elizabeth and I have with me Montserrat. Montserrat was so gracious to come on again and just share where she is in her journey. Every one of us has our own journey, whether we're active participants or we're passive participants. We all have our own journey because we all, every single one, nobody's excluded from the struggle. So thank you so much, Montserrat, for sharing your hope before. I, the last, we were just talking about it before, I, I just got so much encouragement from your last interview where you shared your, um, your testimony of what it was to grow up as a foster child and how, what that impact was like for you and then how that, that impacted PNES for you and the things that you had to do in your own journey to kind of pull back. And I just, I want to jump back to the first thing you said when we jumped onto this call, you said, I got my power back. So first of all, thank you again for jumping on. And would you tell us more about what that means? Well, I would say that actually, um, it's a case of, I used to have this really niggling guilt, guilt mm. of um, having my thoughts and um, thinking about if I was to do this then it might upset somebody else. And it's a case of actually not actually living for me, but living to please everybody else. Mm. And so with having that power back, it's actually making me think, do you know what? I for me to actually like my life, it's actually do things that actually make me feel good. And not saying that I wouldn't do stuff for, for other people. It's not about that. It's actually, if it if it fits in my life, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And that makes total sense. Not going out so of your way it, to make you uncomfortable just so somebody else is comfortable. So um, it's a case of actually um, actually looking into you and actually looking at actually your what you actually want and thinking of it was a case of just thinking about just your life in the in a way and I would be so mm. and it's funny I would be so quiet like literally that's because I'm like thinking oh how what is the best way for me to actually function with mm. this it wasn't to get rid of my seizures actually functioned where I can actually start living again mm. and I I knew that I couldn't do that around people that's I mean, around but I because um they have their own journey to go on and yes they probably wouldn't relate to mine yeah. so um I, I knew that I had to just do that as in staying at home and just just thinking the best way to for me to function basically yeah mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense and I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of us we are we find ourselves in groups of people and we're mismatched and I found my own journey, I, I know I shared this, that I was mismatched with people who weren't actively on a journey. They were more passive and people want to feel like they belong. So they will either pull you into their complacency or at least their, their way of handling the journey, or you will pull them. But very rarely do people who are going on two separate paths can journey together because you know, they're, they're, what do you have to talk about? I mean, it's, it's not like, oh, wow, I read something great. We, we started talking um, when we got on and I was telling you about this book, Safe People, which I created a video about and how much it impacted me, not only because I did want to understand uh, character development or character discernment better, but I also recognized as I was reading that there are tips and tools for me on how to be a safer person for other people. So it was just great because you and I were able to have that conversation. And if you and I were in different paths and we we're like, oh, just whatever, then it would just completely bounce off. But no, you were interested in it. And that allowed us to, to unite on, on uh, a topic. So a lot of times we do find ourselves in, in groups or crowds that we just don't, we're not on the same journey. So, and it's just that we're at this particular journey at this particular time, and we're taking this 
particular approach to it. It does not make them bad and us good or us bad and them good. It's just about owning where we're at and letting people be where they're at. So thank you for that. Cause I really appreciate what you said about that. You're not trying to control people to try to make them happy by your decisions. You've flipped it around and you're just being true to you. Yeah, exactly. And what I would um, also say is that actually the, it's like my, my attention wasn't to harm anybody. Mm-hmm. It was actually to um, just to try, not, I won't say fix me, I would say to help me see who I really was. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yes. And yeah. that was my plan. And I know at the moment, I, ha- I did, I had to get rid of a lot of people because I realised, like, um, a lot of friends, because I realised that actually they, it, I'm going to say, they wanted me to um, be be like I was, my old self is like listening to their thoughts and feelings and trying to make them feel good about mm. their self. And when it comes to the other foot where I needed support, they wanted to manipulate, I can't say that word, the situation. And I kind of thought, you know what, that's unhealthy for me at that moment. So I needed to just part them. Yes. And it was the best thing I did. Mm. It is. It is good and it is hard. Because letting go of things that you're used to, that you're comfortable with, people who know you, it's hard. That's a good job for you that you were able to do that, that you were able to say, I recognize recognize that there's manipulation. I recognize that I don't even know that everybody understands that they're manipulating, but I think that some people are just, they're not aware that they don't know how to do what they want other people to do for them. They just know it feels good. So a lot of us, we just haven't gotten past that certain maturity points and we're all on a journey. So it's not, you know, we're not um, putting down or disrespecting anybody who is on their journey. It's just that we want to um, gravitate, I guess, allow ourselves to be around people who know how to take care of us so that we can help other people, you know, because that's how we mature is is we gravitate yeah. towards people who can help raise us in a way. And then we take that and people who are looking, and that's the important thing I think, is that people are looking for how to get to the next stage. I have one person in my life like that. And she's just, she's, she's an eager beaver. She's always trying to learn and process. And, mm-hmm. and it's great because I have people who I look up to who I process with and I need, and they help me to, to graduate to these new levels. So I'm so glad. So you were able to separate yourself from the old crowd. Tell me about the kind of people that you found yourself gravitating towards. Um, people that are actually, again, um, growing and uh, who would allow me to grow with them mm. and actually, um, people that actually don't judge me and accept me for who I am. Yeah. And even though they accept the old me, they also accept the new me. And, they, and they're like proud of the new me. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and people that would help me to stand up for myself and just make me and see my potential. Mm. in life and that's so wonderful. that's what I want to be gravitating to yes how tell tell everybody first of all did you find it difficult was it a struggle for you to let go of those people the people yes. who were holding you back okay so tell me how I you did me. that it is it is hard uh, it's not easy <laughs> yeah so I would say with these um people that I would actually sort of friends they were, I know them for like um, 12 years, it's over a decade, around 12 to 15 mm. years. And um, they just started to do a little bit of um, 
just toxic behavior and um, making me feel like I was like the person in the wrong, just playing mind games with my head Mm -hmm. and um, just all sorts of um, nickly things. And I'm going there and I'm thinking in my head, this ain't right, but I couldn't put the couldn't put the thing of why it wasn't right. And um, I kind of just decided, so one of the person literally shouted in my face, like mm. literally um, because I wasn't doing what they wanted me to do and I was rising up above them, mm-hmm. this person lost control and literally shouted in my face. I'm at, like really close to my face. So I said, then he's like, I guess this friendship is over. So I was like, yes, correct. And um, then he walked away. So around that time, I kind of just thought, you know what? This is not a good thing for me. I shouldn't be dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're a truth friend, you should be able to support me. And I know I was a little bit of a, vampire as they say you know I was needy. that's an emotional vampire yeah. yeah yeah so I I knew that I was and that was another thing why I just kept distance with a lot of people as well because I knew I was being that mm. and I just needed to get out of that situation out mm. of that emotion and um so yeah I I did I just deleted them on Facebook delete their numbers just delete them out of my life and the funny thing is they keep want to come back yes so yes. I can so that made me think actually they need me more than I need them mm. as in, in my life so, mm. so I just think well, that that's was a good point the- Yeah, that's a good point. And I hope that you recognize that you do have value and that it was not about um, that friendship not working out because uh, either of you don't have value because each of you have value. It's just that you're on different paths, different journeys, and you need different things. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Wow. And so, yeah. So So that was interesting. Tell me a little bit, because you said... I thought you were talking about them being an emotional vampire, but you were actually saying that about yourself. Yeah, I, wow. I do. I recognize. And the, the one thing why I recognize that is because I saw it in other people. Hmm. So I was, so, but um, the way I recognized it was I needed at that time, it was like I needed more emotional for emotional support and just, people just listening to me mm-hmm. just because I I said some stuff I was trying to basically I was trying to say what I wanted to say it, in my head stuff in my head wasn't coming out of my mouth that's the best way I'll describe it yes so I would say it in a diff, like a way that they couldn't recognize mm-hmm. and if they just took the time just to listen to little midly bits what I say then they would have got the gif right that's what I would have done I would have just took the time and think Mm -hmm. what are they trying to tell me Mm -hmm. and um so I kind of thought and at that time it really hurt because I kind of thought okay I'm what I would do they're not doing so it was like I so I realized that actually I'm putting my thoughts and emotions the way I thought that somebody else would do. Yes. And and not see like my mm. negative part. Because mm. I I truly believe that if I had that kind of support, I would have got better a long time ago. Mm. It's and I and I wasn't looking after myself. I do believe that because mm. I was trying to still do like my day-to-day life instead of just sit back and relax and just listen to my thoughts Mm. so about a year and a half I was just still doing stuff and um I should have just sat back and relaxed Mm. but um yeah that's the way it was back then and I'm trying not to look about look what things were back then 
mm-hmm. because I think it's best to look for the future and yes. think actually what would I want in the future what do I want to do in the future yeah. and how I want to live and yeah and and I just think to recognize that's what it was in the past but that's not me and what I want is people not to see my seizure is to actually see me mm. and that's the people that I want around me mm-hmm. because you'll know that people would treat you differently if they saw you than actually saw my seizure. Hmm. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. We do want to surround ourselves in healthy environments. And unfortunately, if we didn't grow up in a healthy environment, we don't know what to look for. And so very similar to what you said, that you were just doing, 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 and you weren't paying attention to the thoughts that were coming and you were just, um, you notice that you gravitated towards certain people, which is very powerful. That awareness is very powerful. So I, I'm just, I'm so grateful that, that you had that moment, that aha moment, that epiphany, that wisdom that came to you. Um, and just, I don't know, I guess for me, I think that gives people hope that, that they can grow out. I mean, that your story very much talks about that is just understanding where you're at in your journey, understanding what you need next, and then really being willing to give up everything just to go for it. Because that's what we need to do. We need to commit to what it is that we want and to gravitate gravitate towards people who are helpful to help us to get to that point in our journey. So Montserrat, if there's anything else that you want our viewers to hear, what would that be? I would say, do you know, I would say have hope Mm. Um, because hope is the most important thing. If you don't have hope that actually you'll be able to get out of this, um, basically if you're having loads of seizures a day, you can get out of that and um, it'll be so much. But I would say also, know your trigger if you find out your trigger it would ease off Mm -hmm. extra a lot and um because for me my trigger what I thought my trigger was wasn't my trigger oh wow until I realized what my trigger was that's when it eased off a lot so it's um yeah so I say that just yes look at your trigger. Yes, yes. Oh, that's such a great piece of advice because I I encourage clients and uh, viewers to put on your scientist hat because you have to be your own advocate. You have to start with yourself. You have to say, I'm going to fight for me. I might not have people in my corner to fight for me, but I'm going to fight for me and God's going to fight for me. And just start looking at those things, being introspective and asking, looking for wisdom. And that is so, 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 so powerful. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming on again. It was so last minute. And I just am so grateful that you'd be willing to come on. I know we have a big time difference because you're in the UK and I'm over in Florida. Um, But I'm just so thankful, so thankful to you and so thankful for you viewers. If you found Montserrat's um, testimony helpful to you, if her journey has inspired you, please give a thumbs up, like the channel, subscribe. And if you are interested in hope, that's what we are hoping to give. Every single visit that you come to our channel, our desire is for you to leave feeling more impacted, more empowered and more hopeful. So thank you. We will see you next time. God bless and be well.